Hey there, it's good to see you. I hope you're doing well, that you're enjoying your morning. I thought that I would finally sit down and uh, do a chatty get ready with me. I know a lot of you have requested it, so here goes. If you like the makeup look I'm wearing and you just wanna sit down and do your makeup with me, then just keep on watching. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna go through and kind of demonstrate for you, give you a little bit mini review of, is the Nivea Men Aftershave Balm. I've heard a lot of hype about this on YouTube as far as being a fabulous makeup primer. I have to admit, I do agree with the hype once you can get past the aftershave smell because it is very, very strong, at least to me. Um, I'm pretty sensitive to smells, but as far as buying the Post Shave Balm. You can find this at Target, Walmart, CBS, Rite Aid, Walgreens, you name it. Um, it retails for about, I want to say between five and six dollars. I paid like five and some change for this and I went on and got the sensitive formula because I wasn't sure how it was going to react with my skin so I didn't want to have a bunch of breakouts. I've been using this for about the past week and a half and so far so good outside of the normal hormonal breakouts that we tend to get. Yay! <laughs> so, so far so good. It's just the aftershave smell is a little bit weird. It's a lotion type consistency. It's very thin and watery. A little goes a long way. This is probably even too much as it runs down my hand, but I just kind of rub it into my hands and then kind of gently pat it over my skin and then rub it in and you want to let it set for just a minute before you apply your foundation. Whew. That aftershave smell. <sighs> I guess we want to smell like men, don't we? <laughs> it does go away. I mean, don't worry about it lingering around because by the time you finish your makeup, you won't smell that aftershave smell anymore, but it is a little, a little weird putting it on your face at first. And like my husband came in and he was like, why are you applying aftershave to your face? And I'm like, it's makeup primer. YouTube made me do it. He was like, all right. So... All right, forgive me if I'm all over the place talking with these get ready with me videos. This is my first time kind of doing this as a chatty besides that Sephora one I did a while back. I'm just not used to talking when I do my videos. And so I want to, or my get ready with me is that didn't make any sense. But um, I'm, I've got to practice. But I enjoy watching your get, what, get ready with me videos because I, I really do feel like you know, we're just sitting down chatting like, you know, having a cup of coffee, talking makeup. And so I'd like to be able to do some more of these once I get into a little bit better habit of being able to talk and do my makeup at the same time. So, all right. So as far as foundation today, I'm going to go on and go in with the um, Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation Plus Concealer. I bought this because I wanted to compare it to the CoverGirl 3-in-1 That All Last Day Fabulous Foundation. I'm curious if this is the high-end version of that foundation. I'm going to do a full wear it or wait list it comparing the two, um, so that way you can have both price points, but I feel like they're kind of going for a similar concept. They're both very full coverage foundations. The only thing is this one from Clinique comes with the uh, doe foot applicator to kind of give you more precise application. Not really a huge fan of that, um, especially as you get further down into the foundation because I feel like that could make it an issue to finish it. I don't want to have to remove stoppers and, you know, risk the foundation drying out. So I prefer the pump of the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous. But like I said, let's look awkward with foundation on our face, shall we? Um, but I'll give you a full review on how I feel. Because the other one I'm kind of thinking too is, I think I may have finally found a Holy Grail product to match the... Um, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind and um, Brightener. I've been using that for years. And now that Urban Decay has released that Naked Skin Color Correcting, I bought the pink one to try out. And so I'm thinking that may be the other part of that review as well to see if it's the high-end version of that drugstore product. I have a lot of videos to film and I just feel like the time gets away from me now that I'm trying to get used to my husband's night schedule because it's really throwing me off. Because I've got to be up all day and like entertaining my kids, you know, between school and my daughter's still at home while my husband sleeps all day. And then I can't like get what I need to done around the house until late afternoon when my son comes home. And of course, that makes it challenging to clean house and everything. And so I'm not cleaning house till late at night, which means I'm not going to bed until super late while my husband's at work. And it's just, it's thrown me off. 
thrown me off for sure. And I do want to have, I, I want to ask you because um, I want to find a you know, drugstore inexpensive soap to clean my beauty blender so it's not going to tear it up because I bought what I thought was an all natural soap at Target. It's supposed to have shea butter and not have mineral oil or sulfates or parabens or any of the bad stuff. But it's tearing up my beauty blender. Like, look at this. It's awful. And so I'm wondering if you have any recommendations. Leave them in the comments below of a soap that you use that doesn't tear up your beauty blender. Because this is just not, not cool. This is only after a month and my sponge looks like it's been through the ringer. It's horrible. Like, I don't want to spend, you know, the 20, is it $22 for the beauty blender cleansing bar? But it doesn't tear up my sponge and it does last the full three months. So... I'm curious if you have any recommendations because I've tried dish soap too and it doesn't work as well as bar soap. And so I'm curious if you've tried Dove or Ivory or some of these other ones if they tear up that sponge material as much as this natural one that I was using. Because I really was disappointed in that. Because I did try another high-end bar because I had what was left of the Hermes um, <sighs> orange and something. I can't pronounce it in French. But um, I used part of that bar to clean my beauty blender and it did a beautiful job. It didn't tear up my sponge. It was able to still last three months, but I don't want to spend that much money on a bar of soap. You know what I mean? So I happen to have had that as a Christmas present um, from my parents a while back and I wanted to use it before the bar of soap just was getting too old and, and rancid. So I cut it up, used part of it in my bath and then the other part I used to clean the beauty blender and it worked beautifully. So, okay, as far as setting powder, the one I've been going in with lately that I picked up was the uh, Maybelline Master Fix uh, Loose Perfect or Setting and Perfecting Loose Powder. This is what I'm currently panning. I'm not a huge fan of this, to be honest with you. Um, I prefer the Wet n Wild Take on the Day Mattifying Powder or if you have the NARS Translucent Crystal Setting Powder. They work a lot better. This is really cakey if you want to actually set your makeup. Um, the best thing I can tell you, I'm going through with an e.l.f. powder brush. Tap it off, you know, swirl it and tap it in the jar just like you're using Bare Minerals and then sweep it across your face because otherwise it gets really cakey. Really, really cakey. And that's not a good look for anybody. So I just go through and sweep it. If I feel like I need to, I will go back with what's left in the cap and tap it again. And then I leave what's left to set my concealer after I'm done with my eye makeup. So just wanted to kind of show you how that goes. I mean, it's, it's not a bad powder. It's an okay powder for a drugstore, but you know, it's not gonna be something I repurchase when I'm done. I'm kind of thinking I might get the MAC, um, not the MSF. What is the powder in like light? I know you know what I'm talking about, but I'm thinking I might try that one next since I've done a couple of drugstore powders in a row. Either that or I might just bite the bullet and try the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder because I've honestly never tried that. I know, I'm late to the party. <laughs> okay. Here we go, that's probably set enough. It does do a little bit of the brightening effect, so I like it, um, but it still, you know, doesn't leave a, a white cast on your face. It's just, it's so heavy and kinky that I'm not a huge fan of it. All right, and then before we do eye makeup, I go on and um, use the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion, and I set, or not set, I use it as a primer from my eyelid to my eyebrow because I actually use this as a base um, for my eyebrows. I know a lot of you have had questions on how I get through my palettes like I do, and one of the ways is multitasking eyeshadow as a brow product. Um, I've actually gotten to the point where I don't buy brow products anymore. I haven't for years because I found that eyeshadow works just as well, if not better. Um, so I go through and I just kind of run that primer potion up into my brows and I don't have to use any brow gels or um, brow waxes because the eyeshadow stays 
all day long and I'm not buying additional products. It really helps me to get through um, some of that extra like darker brown eyeshadow or if I have an eyeshadow that's really ashy looking on my skin, nine times out of 10 I can use it in my brows if it's a dark brown shade or if not I can mix it with um, a warmer shade to complement my brows. So actually let me go on and do my brows and then I'll cut the camera off and go into my eye makeup because I don't want to make my camera get too hot. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with sandstone from my Stila in the Light palette and I take a stiff eyeliner brush. Um, this one happens to be from Bare Minerals. I know you can buy one from Sephora. They're selling them for seven bucks right now. So um, it works just as well or get one of the Real Techniques eyeliner brushes. You can use that to fill in your brows. But basically I go through with sandstone and fill in I go over my entire brow since they, I mean, you can see for yourself on camera, it's just they're non-existent, very faded, and because I have hypothyroidism, the ends of my um, brows are very, very faint, even though my medication dosage has been doing pretty well for the last couple of months. But that's one of the first things you kind of look for when you're having thyroid issues as your eyebrows will get kind of sparse on the ends. Really kind of bizarre. But I just go through, and since I'm trying to do this without my glasses on, what I do is I basically go in and do the shape of my eyebrows, and then after I'm done with my eye makeup, I'll get in real close to the mirror and kind of touch up if I need to. Because, I mean, nearsighted problems right there. Trying to put on your makeup without glasses on is quite the challenge and doing it on camera even more challenging so I just kind of go through and fill in as needed I can't talk and do this at the same time it doesn't work well and then what I'm going to do after I finish kind of doing my brows is I go back through with that powder brush and just kind of tap it over my eyelid to set that Urban Decay Primer Potion. So then my eyeshadow literally stays bulletproof until I take it off. All right, I will come back in just a second to do my eye makeup. Okay, wow, that lighting got different. All right, let's just go with it, shall we? Okay, the next thing I'm gonna go on in and do, I know that you've seen me do this before if you watched any of my Get Ready With Me's, but I go through with my NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in Milk to basically highlight the inner portion of my eyes as well as my brow bone because behind my lenses, my eyes look really, really small and then double that with the hooded lids. They're non-existent unless I go through with a really strong brow highlight. It's not enough for me just to kind of dab a, a brightening shade in my inner corner. It's just not enough. So. What I do if you want to tip it with your hooded lids, especially if you have hooded eyes and glasses, go through with something like a white eyeshadow base and just fill in that inner portion of your eye, kind of make it like this. You don't want it to be stark. You're going to blend it out in just a minute, but you want it to be enough that once you put your eyeshadow on top of it, it's going to give a brightening effect to make your eyes look bigger, brighter, and more awake. Again, this is also helpful. Um, if you're like me and you're trying to adjust to vampire schedule, as I like to call it, with my husband's night schedule, because if you're looking a little bit tired during the day, this really helps to open up your eyes and make you look like you got a little bit more sleep if you're not at night. So basically I go through, looks a little strange when you first put it on, but go through with your middle fingers and just kind of blend it up and into your eye. Because like I said, you want to blend it up where you have that brightening effect. Don't worry if you have a little bit down here, it's going to blend out. When we put on our concealer, and it really is going to blend in once you put on your eyeshadow, I promise. But I just kind of blend it in like that where you're going to have a little bit of a, bit of a brightening effect. And then I'm going to go through with my Wet n Wild Eyeshadow Icon Pencil in Pixie. Just run this across my lid to give me a beautiful champagne base before I go in with that Stila in the light palette. So, super, super easy. Okay. Now, back to how I pan a palette. 
The next thing I'm gonna do um, is go in with the transition shade. And so I'm taking Bliss from my Steel on the Light palette and I'm also combining it with, I forget what the shade is down here, but this comes from the Steel and the No palette. It's that bottom row, third brown chain from the left. It works really well to kind of cool Bliss down just a little bit to kind of anchor anchor my eye look in, but it's also um, very, very flattering for my skin tone. So I like to go in and just kind of do this. That's the other thing you want to do if you have hooded lids is go in with something a little bit darker than your skin tone as a transition shade because it will really help to kind of tone down the hooded portion of your lid and it also helps um, minimize your crease color where you don't look punched out all the time because I know I don't like getting boxed in wearing boring brown, beige, and white all the time. I want to wear any color of the rainbow and, and be able to use any eyeshadow palette out on the market. And this is one of the tips that has really helped um, broaden my horizons as far as my makeup wearing is, is wearing a transition shade. And you can use warm browns, you can use cool browns, you can use, um, you know, beige, peach, whatever you want, but any of those transition shades or when you hear people talk about transition shades in their videos, like if you watch Jaclyn Hill or um, Makeup by Tiffany D or Marlena with Makeup Geek, um, when they talk about transition shades, those are ideal for us with hooded lids. So basically I go in with those. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this e.l.f. C brush like this, I do need to wash it. I used it yesterday and I didn't wash it, but I'm gonna go through with, with uh, Kitten from my Steel on the Light palette and pat this all over my lid on top of that um, Pixie pencil. And I just wanted to share kind of an observation. I don't know if you feel the same way, but I'm kind of looking ahead with painting my palettes and um, I'm looking to pan the Too Faced Chocolate Bar next year. And I'm kind of thinking I need to start a little bit in on it this year because there is so much shadow. I mean, it's to the point where I'm going to be really honest with you. That palette scares the bejesus out of me. Like, um, that's a lot of shadow. A lot of shadow. And when I was looking at it last night next to my Stila and the Light palette, the shades that I'm kind of apprehensive about in Stila and the Light are Gilded Gold and Luster. Those are the two that I feel like I'm going to hit my brick walls on. Um, I probably should tackle Gilded Gold next after I finish Night Sky because, like I said, it's going to be one of those shadows that I'm really, that's going to be my wall, my first wall <laughs> with the Stila palette. We all have them. You push through them. It's, it's okay. It's just kind of tough when you deal with it. But um, I was looking at the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette, and it's really similar to the Steel in the Light palette. I don't know if you've noticed that, like pull them out if you have it or if you're painting your Steel in the Light palette because let me just show you real quick. I was looking at it last night and it just it really kind of made me even more intimidated to take on the Too Faced Chocolate Bar because it's a lot of brown, it's a lot of brown eyeshadow. But kind of take a look at, what is this shade, White Chocolate. It looks very similar to Bayer. It's a little bit more yellow tone than Bayer, but like I said, it's pretty similar. Like I've got bare and then I've got air or air or whatever the one next to it is in the steel and the no palette. And I'm just like, it's a lot, a lot. And then I was looking at shades like sunset kind of reminded me a little bit of amaretto. Amaretto is a little bit darker, but still kind of trending on the same note. Um, and then I found a dupe with, um, brown from the Lorac Mega Pro palette to milk chocolate this shade right here they are literally the same thing they swatch the same in everything even though they look slightly different in the pan and then I was looking at other shades like bubbly kind of looks like um creme brulee gilded gold reminded me of hot chocolate from this palette this shade right here they swatch very similarly which is one of the reasons I was kind of like <gasps> more of the same I don't know and then what was the other one luster luster kind of it's not as dark as Triple Fudge, but it's got that shimmery darkness to it, and it's kind of scaring me a little bit. So, I don't know. Just kind of, kind of putting my thoughts out there. This palette is really, I don't want it to throw my groove off. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to mess me up because I'm, I, I think of Angela every time I look at this and remembering her painting 
all of her different looks. And then like Kyla is panning it this year and there are several other of you panning your, your chocolate bar palettes. And I'm just looking at it and, and it's intimidating me. You know, Stephanie, you too, girl. Um, because it's like, when I've looked at tutorials on YouTube, mostly people have used Amaretto, Milk Chocolate, Marzipan, and um, sometimes Cherry Cordial, sometimes that Shimmery Brown, and beyond that, you don't find a whole lot um, of tutorials and things like that. So I'm sitting there thinking, yes, it's gonna expand me out you know, creatively to come up with some different ways, but at the same time, that's a lot of shadows. So I don't know. I don't know, comment below kind of your thoughts on it because I know like Stephanie, Kyla, all of you that are panning the, the Too Faced Chocolate Bar, like props to y'all, seriously, because that palette, I don't know, like there's way more shadow in there than there is in the Naked Palette and that took a long time. And even the Lorac Pro, like a lot of us stepped into it, myself included, we thought it was gonna be done in six months and it took the majority of us almost a year to finish, you know? It, so I'm looking at that chocolate bar palette and I'm like, maybe I should just hit pan in every shade, I don't know. I don't know, I don't I don't want it to throw my groove off, but just sidebar note, I had to share that. It was a little out there. Why did I just do that? <sighs> I cannot talk and put on makeup at the same time. So let me go up and touch up that transition shade real quick. But basically, kind of going back into painting a palette, as we go into a palette that's not quite so difficult, frankly, because it's way old. That's why it's panning so quickly. But I'm going through with the shade Bare on a fluffy eyeshadow brush, and I'm just going over all the areas that I put that NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk and just um, use it to highlight. And again, you wanna sweep it up into your eye to really maximize that brightening effect, um, if, especially if you're wearing glasses, if you're dealing with hooded lids. Both of these, like at first, you know, if you're not used to wearing your makeup a little bit more um, intense, it's it's gonna take some getting used to, but you really do need to wear it at a little bit more of a, a darker level if you're gonna wear your frames because otherwise you're not gonna see your eye makeup under your glasses. So your highlights need to be more intense, your crease needs to be a little bit more intense so that way they're diffused out by your frames. Okay. Then I'm going through with this crease brush from MUA. I found this at, no, it's Revlon. Revlon crease shadow brush. I found this at, I wanna say I bought this at CVS or Walgreens. I really, really enjoy this brush. Cause look at this, it's a little bit wider, but it still comes to a dome point. I really enjoy this with these dark shadows. But basically what I'm gonna do is I continue painting my palette is I tap it into night sky. I do tap off a little bit into my sink because since I've repressed it, the shadow is very powdery. And basically what I do is I stamp it into that outer portion of my eye like that. And then I sweep it up into my crease. The bonus of doing it this way is you can always build up the color whereas you can't take it away. So I go through and lightly do it this first round, even though it's gonna probably appear a little bit more intense on camera if I could see it. But um, kind of go through and sweep it up into your crease. And before I like add anything, I go on and do the other sides, make sure they're pretty much on an even keel. I stamp it into that outer corner, blend it up into my crease. And I like kind of going with a lighter application, especially with the shade like Night Sky, because you have an ability with these neutral shadows that depending on your intensity with them, you can make them work with any blush that you own, any lip color you own, any outfit you own, so that you don't have to feel so limited in panning or feel like you're getting sick of a look because you're constantly having to wear the same things to make it work. Um, I have found that I can make this gray eyeshadow work with absolutely anything in my wardrobe, any season. I'll show you how I make it spring appropriate as we get into the mascara. Um, because I mean, I know a lot of people will look at gray eyeshadow and think you're limited to, you know, the fall and the winter, but no, you can make gray eyeshadow work all year long. Change up your mascara, do some brightly colored things, change up your lips, change up your blush. You can easily, very easily make it work for you. So because Stila has a little bit of fallout, I go back through with my powder brush and just sweep under my eyes when I'm done to make sure I don't have any fallout. 
And then I'm gonna go through with um, some of my MAC Black Track Fluid Line, just pick any of your favorite cream or gel liners. I'm going in with a Real Techniques liner brush. I don't do wings because my glasses will hide it and my hooded eyes will also hide it. So I'm just gonna go through an eye line, line my eyes <laughs> as normal. And then I go back through and I set it with ebony from that Steel in the Light palette because I have problems with my liners transferring when I don't set them during the day. So that gives me a way to kind of get through those darker shades because I know I have a harder time using something like a black shadow as standard shadow because it's so over the top to make my eyes look really, really small. So I'm just gonna go through a very easy, no must, no fuss kind of line. And then I go through and set it with ebony. And I, again, I'm using just a Real Techniques eyeliner brush. I love this. I go through and I stamp it into ebony. And then I stamp it on top of that liner so I don't have a lot of flaking or fallout all over my face. But just in case, so I don't want to have any risk of it, I will go through and sweep up anything that might have fallen under my eyes while I applied that. All right, I'll be back in just a second. All right, next to cancel out kind of the darkened look from wearing, you know, the gray eyeshadow on my, in my crease area, I go through with this Maybelline Instant Age Rewind and Brightener and I make a triangle shape under my eyes and blend it in with my Dampen Beauty Blender sponge because it really helps to bounce the light from my face back up into my eyes, which is especially helpful when I put my glasses back on. Um, and also to kind of be on the lookout, I purchased the um, Urban Decay Naked Skin um, Color Corrector in the pink shade. I'm curious if it's gonna be the high-end version of this particular concealer. I've been using this for years and I haven't found something I like just as well, but I'm kind of curious to try because I'm almost done with this one. I'll be done with it in probably another month, maybe a month and a half. So I'm curious to try that um, Urban Decay Naked Skin Color Corrector to see if it's just as good as this and then give me something you know high-end to kind of change things up, even though this is a great price for what it is. But um, just kind of be on the lookout because I was kind of thinking that with the, um, like I said, with the Clinique foundation in comparison to the CoverGirl 3-in-1 and then having a concealer at a drugstore price point and then at a high-end price point, I thought that might be kind of fun. So after I go on and do my concealer, I take what's left in that Maybelline cap from our uh, setting powder earlier and I do tap it in this time because this concealer creases a little bit, even though I love it. So I do tap that powder in to make sure it's not gonna budge. And then I don't have any problems with it moving during the day. And then I've got a little bit of powder left in the container because I accidentally poured a little too much. So I'm just gonna go through and swirl it over my face, make sure we've got all our Areas covered up, good to go. Okay, now what we're gonna do is kind of work on our lower lash line, get all that to blend in and match with our eye makeup. And so what I'm going to do when I can close this silly powder, I'll just mess with that later. Okay, I'm gonna go through with the next Wonder Pencil in the shade Light and just go through my water line. I hope this doesn't gross you out because I know I get a little bit weirded out when people are putting things in their water lines on camera. Even putting on contacts, like they never bothered me to put in my own contacts, but to watch somebody else do it, it kind of grosses me out, I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird like that. Okay, but basically I'm gonna go through with, um, what is this, the Real Techniques Accent Brush. It's a really, really teeny tiny brush and I'm gonna go through with a little bit of Night Sky. I just pat it into the shadow tap off the excess since that um, shadow is powdery from repressing it. And then I'm gonna go through and line the um, outer half of my lower lash line just to anchor that gray shadow. I don't go all the way across because it tends to close in my eyes, so I keep that shadow just to the outer half of my eye. 
and it helps to elongate my eyes a little bit and make them seem a little bit rounder in the center, kind of taking away from that almond shape that I've got going. Okay, and just in case to make sure there's not any mess from fallout, I go through and just sweep that powder brush one more time. And then let's go on and do our contouring. What I've been doing lately is taking my hourglass powder in a dim light. And I've been going through just as a typical contour. It makes a beautiful, subtle, not a clown face line of demarcation because I'm not really into that. I mean, I, I need a stronger contour now that we're getting into warmer weather again, but I'm basically just taking the Sony Kashuk version of the NARS Eda brush. I, stamp it into the hourglass powder and I'm kind of going a little bit above my cheekbones on the side, but I go down like this and then I blend it up onto my face. Wow, my face looks like so different from my neck in this lighting. Not cool. All right, because in person this matches really well, but on camera, it's a different story. <laughs> YouTube problems, I swear. All right, but go down here and I'm just, I, you basically see, I really just wanna hollow out that cheekbone area without like sucking in my cheeks and all that, but I blend it up just cause I want to, you know, kind of give a nice shape to my face without having it be really, really obvious. And then I go through and do my hairline and do the other side. And then I take it down the sides of my nose like so, and a little bit under my chin, and it works really, really well as a very, very subtle contour. Then I'm gonna go through with my Benefit Hula Bronzer, and I've got a, not, I mean, a Bare Minerals Angled Brush. I'm just gonna go through and make threes on the side of my face, basically start in the middle so that, you know, you get that sun-kissed glow on your cheeks swirl it up into your temple and forehead area and then swirl below to get the underside of your jaw. And that way you don't have any harsh lines with your bronzer. And then go through on the other side, start that three, go up into your hairline and bring it down. It's a complete goof proof way to do bronzer and then you don't have to worry about going way too heavy. And then if you want, take what's left just kind of dust under your chin, to help slim everything out, and then go through on the top of your forehead. So, very, very easy. Then, my favorite blush that I've really been loving lately has been the Benefit Rockateur. I can't get enough of this blush this month. It really is helping to make this gray eye a little bit more spring appropriate. It's just a really beautiful, neutral pink color. I'm going through with the e.l.f. blush brush right here. I'm keeping it towards the back side of my cheeks so that way my face stays very balanced under my frames. So I just keep it back there like this. And another tip, if you're kind of looking at painting your blush collection and you're you know, a little bit intimidated by some of the colors that you own, one of the things that you can do is go through with a fluffy eyeshadow brush. This happens to be a concealer brush from e.l.f but I like it because it has the really fluffy bristles on it. Go through with whatever blush you're trying to pan after you apply it to your cheeks. Take a little bit on that fluffy brush and sweep it through to blend out your crease color. It will warm it up, it will anchor your look down, and it will also make it very more, not very more, it will make it more flattering for your particular skin tone if you have it on your eyes translating down to your face and reflect it in your lip color. Um, so that way you don't have these striking clown cheeks that you just feel are really out of place on your face. So I do this with every single blush color, especially if I feel a little bit uncomfortable with it. You can even do this with some of your crazier shades, like if you have um, Urban Decay's Bittersweet, which is a really vibrant purple. Go through when you do a smoky eye, run that bittersweet in your crease. It will warm up the look a little bit, make it look more purpley, then you can anchor it to your cheeks and reflect it in, you know, kind of a purpley lip. It's really, really pretty. And also too, it helps you to pan a blush a little bit faster. So just go through tip of the day. I always do this no matter what blush color I have because it helps to tie in that neutral look and make it work with 
anything that you're possibly wearing. And then I'm gonna basically go back through with Steel on the Light. I have this Real Techniques contouring brush right here. I'm gonna go through with Bare and basically go over any highlighting areas. I'm gonna highlight the tops of my cheekbones because that's the other thing. I've really discovered that I'm a huge fan of matte highlights. They're really flattering under glasses and they also work a lot better for me under glasses than the shimmery highlights. So I don't buy highlights like I used to. I mean, I did um, get champagne pop for Christmas and I have a couple of shimmery highlights I'd like to get through this summer, but it's another way that you can multitask a lot of your eyeshadow and go through and use your palettes. If you're trying to hit pan on as many shades as you can this year, start doubling up a lot of your lighter shades as highlighters all over your face. It works wonders to help you um, move through your collection. So, and then just to kind of touch it up, I'm gonna go through and basically touch up my eye highlight just because it tends to get lost a little bit as I do my makeup. All right, and we'll come back and do some mascara and some lips. All right, the next thing I've got going is I'm gonna take this very basic Revlon eyelash curler and just curl my eyes. I hope that doesn't weird you out because I know I get kind of weird about stuff like that. But basically, if you want a quick tip for hooded eyes, go through and curl your lashes as normal and then kind of tilt the um, eyelash curler upwards. It really helps maximize that curl in your lashes. Don't pull your eyelashes out, be very careful. Um, but I saw Wayne Goss and um, Miss May Makeup, she's one of the, another British YouTuber. Um, she also uses that tip for hooded eyes and it really does help to open up your eye and make them look more awake and a little bit bigger. But basically, just as I was talking about earlier, if you really want to start multitasking your products and making your eyeshadow palettes work all year long, regardless of what you know eye colors you're wearing or whatnot, you can really maximize it with colored mascara. Um, because we're you know stepping into spring, I wanted to make this gray look work for me. Wearing a blue mascara layered on top of black does beautiful things to brighten up your eye look, make your eyes look really fresh, and it also complements that gray that's on your eyes and makes it look more bright, awake, and, and fresh. So before we go in with the blue, I'm gonna wear this Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill Waterproof Mascara. I've been pleasantly surprised by this. I need to do this uh, in a wear it or wait list it because um, I accidentally bought the wrong formula. I went to go buy the normal formula because I've heard, you know, Tiffany D talk about it for years and I thought, why not? You know, I needed a new mascara. I thought I would try it. Um, but I actually have been pleasantly surprised by my mistake in buying this waterproof formula because now that it's dried out slightly and gotten past that weird kind of flaky stage because it did flake initially when I got it, um, I really enjoy this mascara. So, if you're in the market for a new one, I do suggest trying this out, but you do need to give it a couple of weeks because it was not something I enjoyed particularly, and I know a lot of other people um, are not fond of this mascara initially either. So, um, but just to show you, going through, if you have purple mascaras or if you have blue mascaras or green or any of that, layer them on top of your black mascaras. It will help freshen up your look depending on the season. This is just a blue mascara from Hard Candy. I found this at Walmart. It was just a few bucks. It's kind of a crazy looking blue in the tube, but on your eyes, it's not gonna be that intense. So you wanna just go through, give a quick coat to your lashes. You don't need to be able to see bright blue. What you're looking for is that brightening effect. So if you get the blue on the tips of your lashes, bonus, that is gonna be what helps and then you still have the nice black coat to make your lash line look really thick and beautiful. So go through and just top lashes, as you can see, it brightens up my eyes quite a bit and, and I can wear gray eyeshadow all year long. You're not limited to wearing it in the fall and winter. You can wear black eyeshadow this way. You know, pop it in with a silver and some blue mascara. Or if you're wearing brown eyeshadow and you're, you're trying to make a really dark brown work like luster from Stila or, you know, um, triple fudge from your Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. Put a purple mascara on top of black 
it will brighten up your eyes. It'll make your, your dark eyes pop if you have brown eyes or if you have green eyes, it makes them pop. And then also too, it kind of lightens up the look for spring. So there we go with mascara. And then one of the other things, I did go on and bite the bullet. I put on Instagram, I was kind of wondering about your opinions as far as this Pixie by Petra makeup fixing mist. I went on and decided to pick it up because I needed a, a new setting spray and I thought, why not? The concept of this is kind of a cross between the Mario Badescu Rose Water Spray because it smells really, really strong of roses, but kind of the claims of the MAC Fix Plus. I don't like it to set makeup on a makeup brush like MAC Fix Plus, but as a setting spray, it's not bad. So let's go on and set our makeup. Whew, but yeah, the rose, the rose smell is like in your face. Whew. <coughs> Like a bouquet is like three inches from your face kind of thing. Okay, so there we go as far as our face. And then as far as lips, I wanna keep it really simple. I'm gonna go on and kind of demo this. Um, sorry, my camera cut off there, but as far as lips, we're gonna keep it really easy. I kind of wanted to demo for you this um, Bite Lipstick in the shade Pepper I got in the um, Influencer box for the Amuse Bouche um, campaign that's been going on. It's a really pretty easy everyday mauve shade. Um, and then there are two other really bright red lipsticks. So I will have a separate video if you are interested in that line of lipsticks going on at Sephora right now because these are pretty good and they're by beauty. So you know they're gonna be fantastic. But this is just an easy everyday mauve shade. I'm not gonna worry about a lip liner. So let's just go through. It kind of reminds me of, kind of reminds me of a cross between rhubarb and glossé. Be honest it's not completely matte but it definitely has that vibe They're right in between okay easy everyday color so that's about it thank you so much for taking the time to watch this let me know if you like the chatty get ready with me's like this because I know it's gonna take me a little bit of getting used to but this was kind of fun to just sit down and chat so um, yeah, I've got a lot to film and, and a lot coming out your way. In fact, I was kind of making my list of the videos I need to plan out and I have like 10 videos that I need to get cracking on and get out for you. So there's going to be a lot coming from me in the next couple of weeks. So I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day and your evening. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Catch you later.